What's up guys, CP Modder here, back with another video and today we're here with this month's PC build. But this time we're focusing on a budget bang for the buck, the best of the best that you can get for the sort of less money that you would spend for a gaming system here in 2018. Now the $1500 price point has been a very awesome sweet spot for a lot of gamers out there who are looking to get into gaming without blowing a ton of money, but also too without buying something kind of over the top or not buying something that's kind of trash, buying something that's good value for the money. However, 2018 does throw a couple other things into the mix where we may not necessarily have to spend a whole bunch there to get a good performing system. Now, we'll get into the parts in just a moment, but yes, I do want to make it clear, sure, you could spend what we're spending here today to get that really good performance, or you could spend one or $200 more to get something that visually looks better in terms of the visuals department. Today, we are focusing 100% on the performance in this system rather than what it actually looks like. So yeah, if you're expecting some super awesome RGB gaming rig, well, you're not going to get that unfortunately. Today we are more focusing on what you can get for the money here today. So let's go ahead and jump into it. First off, we do need to take a look at the CPU as that is generally considered the brain and we are looking at the AMD Ryzen 5 1600. At 3.2 gigahertz with six cores and 12 threads, this guy isn't too bad here in terms of the specs department. Now, it is definitely a beast in terms of gaming and also too will have plenty of legs to stretch out into the future. So in terms of just running this chip for quite some time, I'm expecting this thing to have a very long lifespan. Now, you'll also to notice that unfortunately it is still first generation Ryzen and why didn't I go for second generation? Well, simply coming back to the fact that we want to go for the best bang for the buck. Again, sure we could have gone with second generation and gotten slightly better performance, but we are saving a fair bit of cash here, which we can then pump into other parts of the system, such as a better video card, better storage or anything like that for our system. Or we can just keep that money and buy a bunch of games which would be really cool there, especially if you're building a gaming PC because there's no point blowing all your budget on an actual PC if you don't have any games to actually play on it. So we'll save some money here and going with the last generation CPU. Again, definitely nothing wrong with it and definitely gets the job done. So we're gonna throw it in our system right here. Motherboard wise was a little bit of a compromise but definitely still gets the job done. We did grab ourselves the ASRock A320M Pro 4 motherboard. This is a micro ATX board. So in terms of actual compatibility size wise, it will fit in just about any case out there that isn't ITX and also to the fact well it supports everything we need with plenty of RAM support right there we've got our PCI Express connectivity our SATA ports everything you would expect from a mid to high end system right here in our motherboard now yes it is an A320 system meaning no overclocking unfortunately on this guy however it's still a boss of a CPU and the CPU cooler which we're running which is just a standard box AMD cooler really wouldn't get us too much of an overclock so we're better off just leaving it completely stock out of the box and we should still be getting very good performance again we're really only looking at playing video games rather than doing video editing or streaming something like that where the video games will be more than plenty for this CPU to be handling now RAM wise Again, a little bit of a sad story. Sure, we did go ahead and save money on the motherboard and also to the CPU, but we did pick ourselves up some crucial DDR4 2133 memory, and it is a single eight gigabyte stick. Honestly, I would have loved to go ahead and grab 16 gigs, and honestly, I do recommend 16 gigs here. However, one, it is still a gaming system, and it isn't necessarily being built for multitasking in terms of video editing or streaming and gaming and those type of things. So eight gigs will definitely get us by today, and thanks to the fact that we do have quite a few RAM slots left over on our motherboard, we could easily throw extra RAM sticks in there. So 8 gigs is definitely going to have to do here today. You can get by just about every single game on the market here today. And I still know a lot of people out there who are gaming just fine on just 8 gigs of RAM. So there's really not that much of a problem there. Heck, it was only a year or two ago that we were saying 4 gigs of RAM was enough. Now we're up at 8 and 16 gigs. So again, whilst I would have liked 16 gigs, eh, we're still going to go with 8. Now, oh, before we do get any further, I do know that there is someone in that comment section already telling me down in there that, you know, you should be running dual channel RAM. It's going to be performing better in dual channel mode and blah, 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 blah. You should run two sticks of RAM. And I totally agree with you, but because we are going to be going ahead and targeting price and performance, one stick of RAM will get us by today. And hey, if you do want to spend some extra money and you do have some extra cash lying around, go ahead, grab yourself a second stick of RAM for slightly better performance. No, in game, you won't necessarily see 100% better performance. Like you probably won't even notice the difference. However, if you are going to be doing some other multitasking or something similar to that, 
uh, definitely throwing in an extra stick of RAM will help. So yes, whoever's going to be telling me in that comment section to run dual channel RAM, I totally agree with you. But if we can just take a moment to realize that this is all about budget to performance and that kind of stuff, 8 gigs single stick, definitely more than enough here today. Storage wise was actually a really surprising one. Lately we've been going ahead and getting ourselves an SSD and hard drive set up for just about ever, but we've also do been spending a fair bit on our 240 gig drive. However, SSDs have come down a lot in price lately and we've grabbed ourselves a 480 gig drive for the price of what we were grabbing a 240 gig drive just a few months ago and that is the Kingston A400. Sure this guy is a budget 480 gigabyte SSD but man 480 gigabytes for the price of a 240 gig drive definitely not too bad there. And then backing this guy up we'll grab ourselves a uh, 4 terabyte WD blue drive which will get the job done right here for mass storage and anything else you want to throw on your system. Now I did pick 4 terabyte because a lot of games these days are getting really, really large. Now we could have saved a few dollars and gone with a three or even two terabyte drive. You can get a two terabyte drive for less than a hundred dollars. But I did go ahead and spend that little bit extra on the four terabyte drive because again, we are all about gaming and games are gonna take up storage. And the last thing you wanna do is load up a couple games and oh, now your whole computer's full. So we'll put key applications like the Internet Explorer, well, not the Internet Explorer, but a web browser of some sort, the operating system, maybe if you wanna throw Microsoft off on there all onto the SSD and games will all go ahead and be ran straight off that hard drive. Now in terms of performance between hard drives and SSDs there really isn't too much of a big difference in terms of actual latency and performance that kind of stuff but there is a bit of a difference in terms of load times and I believe we did a video a little while back if you want to check it out right there you can go ahead and check it out there but all in all we will have no problems running off a hard drive here. But moving to the most important part of a gaming system and that is the video card and today we went with the Asus dual GTX 1060 6 gigabyte card and this is definitely an absolute boss video card now yes there'll be people out there saying oh just hang on and wait till the new RTX series comes out wait until that happens and that kind of stuff but honestly really I would just be building with a 1060 at this point in time especially at the time of recording we don't have any information about the uh, GTX or rather the RTX series in terms of actual review notes we've definitely had the series launch but we haven't seen any independent reviews. Now, sure, this will definitely change as of the time of releasing, but at the time of recording, we know about the RTX series, but we don't exactly know a whole bunch in terms of actual performance. So personally, I wouldn't necessarily be holding out if you are looking at something like the GTX 1060 class. You'll be getting a slight discount at the moment, say if you hold off for another two, three months, you may even see a bigger discount, and that GTX 1060 is still an absolute boss card and you're probably gonna have to be waiting quite some time before we see something at the same price point actually manage to beat it out. So 1060 is what I would be going with here. And personally, if I didn't make YouTube videos right here and if I didn't go ahead and do 3D renders and if I didn't manage to get my last build sponsored, I would definitely be running a 1060 thanks for the fact that it just runs really well in games and does an awesome job of that. In fact, I've not only recommended, but I've also to build a ton of systems with GTX 1060s. Heck, there's even a 1060 box up behind me. There is a lot of things that I love about the 1060, and especially for gaming, is going to get the job done absolutely perfectly. So yeah, 1060 Dual from Asus is what we grabbed here. Now case-wise, we just grabbed the Thermaltake Take Versa H24, uh, mainly because I've actually built my own system in this personally, and I know how decent enough it is uh, for airflow and how easy it is to mod to put a side panel window on this guy if you do really want to go ahead and do that. So yes, not only is this guy a little bit more on the boring side, it doesn't have any RGB, it doesn't even have a side window, but as I did mention, I've built with this system before, so in terms of airflow and overheating, there should be no problems whatsoever, even if you don't put any uh, case fans on this guy, I may have ran my GTX 1080 Ti and 6950X in that exact case with zero case fans on this guy and I was perfectly fine at that. But also to, uh, if you do build your system in here and want to go ahead and upgrade to RGB and want to do some upgrades later on, you can easily fit up a side panel window to this guy and it works perfectly fine if you want to get some DIY stuff in there. Or if you just want to jump on the website and buy a side panel window, you could totally do that as well. So the Versa H24 was chosen right here. Then finally rounding out our build, we grabbed the power supply, which was a Supernova G3 uh, 650 watt uh, 80 plus gold system. It is definitely probably a little bit overkill for this build, with PC Power Picker reckoning we need less than 300 watts. However, I always love to overbuy my power supply because you can take that to your next system and your next system and most likely to the system after it. In fact, great story here, my personal power supply that I run in my personal system every single day was actually bought 
three builds ago. I've actually carried it over three different builds and it's been perfectly fine. I completely overspent on it. I spent $250 on that power supply, but it has lasted me about the last five years and has gone through three different builds. So I've really been impressed with just how well it stood up. So buying a good quality power supply will definitely last you some time. And let's say that you build this system and it lasts for five years and then it's time for an upgrade and you build another system for another five years. Boom, your power supplies just lasted you 10 years. Sure, you spent a little bit more today, but all in all, it's gonna last you a lot longer, won't explode, and won't take out the rest of your system. Not to mention, there's plenty of headroom here if you wanna add some RGBs, if you wanna chuck in another video card, even though you can't really with a 1060, but you get my point. If you wanna upgrade something later on, you can definitely do so with this power supply, so definitely a thumbs up from me. Chuck in a cheap key of Windows from GVG Mall, and boom, our system is together for just $1,200, and boom, Boom, this is going to be an absolute awesome little system for playing some video games. Sure, you could definitely add a few hundred dollars on top of this guy to go ahead and get yourself a decent 1080p screen and a decent keyboard and mouse combo, but all in all is a very nice tower right there. Now, yes, doesn't look that great there, but in the performance department, this thing will definitely perform really well, smash through all the games you are going to be playing and does a really good job at it thanks to a 1060 and awesome AMD CPU in this guy. And just like grabbing yourself some decent 1080p monitor or a keyboard and mouse combo, throw an extra couple bucks at this system and you could have some really nice RGB LEDs, you could upgrade the case, you could really do whatever you want for a really clean and good looking system. But honestly, if someone was to give me about $1,200 and say, build a gaming system that delivers great bang for the buck, this is definitely a system that I would consider. But do let me know down in that comment sections, would you go ahead and actually spend that one, maybe $200 extra to go ahead and add some RGB or some sort of lighting or a nicer case? So do let me know what you think down in that comment sections. If you want to build a similar system like this, I've left the PC part picker link in that description box along with all the actual parts themselves. And if you don't live in Australia and you want to see the prices in your own country, jump on that PC part picker link, select what country you're in or what region you're in and boom, the prices are there for you. So guys, thanks all for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.